What's up, LC heads? Well, the uh, the collabs are finally here. <laughs> the collab, you know, I don't even want. I don't even. I don't even want to. I don't even want to start making those jokes. Adis might think this is a good thing and just be like, "Yeah, let's start start tripling up on the collabs all together. We'll, we'll just we'll take four or five collabs, stick them together with some bubble gum, and you know." <laughs> <laughs> Give them five different limited characters and arcs to pull for in the same week. So, uh, we have Lenneth Valkyrie to roll this whole nightmare out for us. Um, I'm a firm believer that when Last Claudia puts these heroes out, there's unfortunately some kind of board meeting and they sit there and go, how do we pump more money out of these efforts? They're little pay pigs, AKA us. And obviously the best way to do that is to lead with an okay character. Um, and I mean, this girl's definitely solid and she's got uh, a killer sprite. So everybody that has any nostalgia for this hero at all, go for it. Pull her just to have her on your account uh, because you enjoy this hero so much. For the rest of us that don't really have a nostalgic connection to this hero um, or not enough of one to pull out a Visa card, I'm going to have to say that you could probably hold off. Probably hold off. Uh, Last Cloudy has a history of, you know, dropping the real powerful niche heroes on the second part of the collabs. Um, now there's there's like exceptions to this. Wasn't Virgil the first one to drop when when he came around? And he definitely uh, is still a top tier hero in my book. Um, but for the most part, we get these collabs. They'll lead with a cool hero. Uh, and then after you spend all your resources pulling for that hero, they drop some shit where you're like, damn, I gotta have that one. Like this one was cool. But that one has these abilities and does these things, and ah, I'm gonna have to go get another mortgage on the house. Well, whatever, you know. <laughs> like, anyway, that's kind of what I'm feeling like here. Um, is this taking away from Leneth Valkyrie at all? It shouldn't. It shouldn't for you if you are pulling this hero for the right reasons, for all that nostalgic stuff. Well, you know, that's the best reason in the world. Or if you just really, really like this hero. Because I'm going to tell you right now, she's definitely not weak. That's for sure. All right, that's three minutes of me rambling. Let's actually talk about the hero. Not how I feel about this whole double, triple collab situation. Uh, she looks pretty solid. Um, we have her summary. We got stats. She's weak to headaches, as most women are. Uh, she's curse resistant as a Valkyrie that makes sense she's got nil to blind good luck blinding her and she comes with 15% innate uh, dark resistance so does make sense she is well, like some kind of Valkyrie of the gods type deal light seems to be her element she's strong against dark everything checks out so far we go over to the abilities bolt slash forward dash close in for a medium area light combo attack i like that there is a dash built into the s1 uh the s2 infinity blast front medium area mid-range light combo attack and then the s3 vertical raid instantly move behind the enemy for a wide area light combo attack that's really cool i like the fact that this has instantly move behind an enemy so you know you want to take your backstab and stuff like that you'll instantly be able to get it in with the s3 uh, and then we have the special um she's gonna be a special special lady she's gonna be throwing that special what is this called Nibelung vels it, you know what it's too norwegian for me to pronounce uh light combo attacks to one target followed by a powerful light combo attack to all enemies all enemy attack damage cap 20,000. So you're getting more cap, 20,000 more cap to the end of her attack. That is like the big AOE part of it. Uh, but 
the single target attacks are probably going to be a hefty amount of damage on their own. So, kind of like the best of all worlds, you can focus the boss and get, you know, a good hit count. And then you drop this big bomb at the end that not only is going to hit the boss, it's also going to hit all the little minions around the boss, if there is any. And it's getting 20,000 more to the damage cap for that big, big finale at the end of the special. Cool. I dig that. Uh, especially because, and I think this is really her whole kit and caboodle, she gets to power up her special very easily. Talking about her traits, of course. Uh, technical Arts Energy. Light physical attack damage 30%, damage cap 20,000. When unit uses skills four times within 10 seconds, give next special used a damage 150% damage cap and a, what is that, 100,000 more buff? 100,000? Is that 100,000? It's hard to see on a small screen. Looks like it's 100,000 more uh, to, to your damage cap. Uh, special has a chance to deal critical damage. So, I mean, you're probably going to need to hit with crits to actually fulfill her huge, crazy damage cap right because it's not like she's a 10,000 strength hero so um those crits are going to be important that's probably against a nasty boss that's probably going to be the best way to actually uh get even close to filling out her crazy damage cap with her special um that's the way i see it so we're going to want to build a little bit of critical in this girl's kit just imo uh she is playing off of that a little bit right because uh 1955 base strength right now the other thing i noticed too when she drops her special now i wish i had the hero so i could actually test things like this when she drops her special she throws you up in the air and like pins you to an invisible wall with her sword and then she pulls a total super saiyan 3 move and just goes up in the air higher than you and, you know, launches the second part of her barrage special attack. It all looks really cool on the screen. Uh, what kind of got me interested in that is technically the enemy is getting pinned up in the air when she's doing her special. So I would guess, I'm guessing off the top of my head right now, that Sky High and Sky High 2 and abilities that do more damage to enemies... Um, I think that should play into that. I don't see why you couldn't get that to proc or anything like that. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, like, do those effect specials? Uh, it should work like that. If <laughs> if it doesn't, um, and my whole thing is, again, she would probably need that extra 20, 30% to the damage to actually uh, fill out some of these crazy caps. Uh, I totally think she can do it right? Especially if you're doing 150% more damage with the special, um, and all that good stuff. Uh, so really easy to do, right? All you have to do is save up four of her abilities and throw them back to back to back to back, get all four of them in there within a 10 second time span. And then you are supercharged to drop that dirty special. Um, Personally, I think just quadruple spanning the S1 might just be, like, her fastest skill. I don't know. Again, I don't have her to run right now. So, <laughs> um, all in all, it's not too bad. The only issue I think you would have is if you're fighting some kind of boss that keeps interrupting you. Um, yeah, it's something I'd have to test out because I don't know if you if you need to drop that whole ability without it getting interrupted to count as one of the uh, four abilities that you have to throw in that 10 seconds. Um, I just, I don't know what the limitations on that are. It sounds like it could be something very easy to unlock. Just spam the S1 four times and I'm, I'm ready to go for the special that I'm going to drop and all this crazy damage. So like that's kind of her big play with that. Uh, we also have another trait, Purify Weird Soul. Battle start. Give all allies an 
strength. I think it's supposed to be A strength and intelligence plus 50%. And you're getting SCT recovery speed plus 35% buff. Physical slash magic damage from non-god type enemies minus 30%. That's huge. Anything that's not a god type, you're taking 30% less damage from them. Wow, when an ally is incapacitated, restore the unit's hit points 50%. That's a lot of awesome utility. Uh, I really think that's what makes this girl worth it. She's not just uh, a really solid DPS hero that very easily unlocks her damage potential by just throwing four abilities in a row and then just getting to throw a super special. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's that's ultimately what we're getting here. It's not necessarily bad, right? It's just very straightforward, and I don't think anybody can say that it's weak. That's for sure. Uh, but I, I still think, like, the big pull for this hero is just going to be uh, people that are already a huge fan of her. I mean, look at the sprite work. The sprite looks killer. Uh, yeah, everything looks killer. The special looks awesome. It's just nice to see on the screen, especially if you're a huge fan uh, of this title. And I mean, the the hero just looks good, <laughs> right? So we have some awesome utility here. Um, I think we might as well cover her paid gear if you have to choose between one or the other. Like if I if I pulled this hero right now and I had to choose one. I think I would have to go with the sword because I think it actually uh, has an effect on one of her traits. She gets 10% more. Um, so she would, from my understanding of it, she'd be getting strength and intelligence plus 60% from it while everyone else gets 50. Anyway, either way, uh, Purify Weird Soul would be good as just a solo trait that only affects you. Uh, what makes this great is this is applying to... Yeah, give all allies strength and intelligence plus 50%, SCT recovery speed 35% buff, and some damage reduction. Like, that right there, um, another hero would have to cast a lot of these things and actually put them up to get the equivalent of that, right? Just think about how many spells you would have to cast how many abilities you'd have to have go off to give all of your allies strength and intelligence 50%. Oh yeah, and an SCT recovery speed 35% buff. You're going to be casting a haste on everybody, a form of haste, and you're going to be increasing their strength and intelligence by 50%. There's a couple spells you need to cast right there. And then this whole physical slash magic damage from non-god type monsters minus 30%. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know... That's a lot of utility already built in that's just going to automatically go off as soon as the fight starts. So she's bringing a hell of a lot of utility with her, right? And yeah, she would definitely make a gnarly light attribute party for sure. Um, I mean, that's, that's really where she stands in my book. She's very simple, very straightforward, still very powerful, great, uh, you know, great solid damage potential. And this purity of weird soul or whatever it is, um, it's, it's, it's awesome in my book. I'm, I'm all for that. I don't really see anything to nitpick here as far as um, all of the utility that she's bringing. I just, I don't see other damagers really bringing quite this level of, uh, you know, helping the rest of the party with some kind of crazy uh, trait. So, she's solid. She looks solid. Uh, best of luck to everybody. Uh, her arc is also pretty damn nifty. Now, I did luck out. I pulled the arc twice now. So, um, and I think that's it. I'm done I'm going in for this hero. I'm going to obviously get whatever tickets that I can, and I personally am going to be holding out probably for part two or part three or whatever part Rena's is going to be on. I'm psyched for a new support, and I can't wait to see what that all entails and what that brings. Um, do we have a new potential gen in the game? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we also have a probably fairly powerful fire damage hero 
um, coming. But I'm holding out for Rena. Um, I'm just going to be up front with you guys. So pulling any of these arcs along the way, especially on a banner with a hero that I'm not too worried about, I at least managed to get the arc. Arc's pretty solid. Uh, the arc trait, light skill, special damage, plus 25%. And crit damage plus 15%. I really think that's that's nice in here to have that crit plus 15%. Uh, again, it's really made for Leneth. Um, and the crit definitely, I think, is going to help her. It's going to help her fulfill all that crazy damage cap. Uh, but it's going to be nice for any other light attribute hero to have as well. I mean, who's going to complain about more critical damage? Most heroes are rocking at least some crit in their kit. So I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. Chance to nullify critical attacks taken. And that's cool. Physical slash magical attacks damage taken. Minus 5% per living ally other than unit. So, you know, you got two other people there with you. Or three other people there. You got a full party. You're taking 15% less physical and magical damage just from having this arc on. You're still getting good light skill and special damage boost and you're getting some crit damage boost on top of that pretty cool i'm down with it um as far as abilities go uh the big draw here is again with this norwegian shit and hinjar i don't know i i used to think i was part viking myself but now i don't know you think i'd be better at reading this shit and making this out anti-type or attribute weakness damage taken minus 10 percent 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 uh effect does not stack with itself that's right if you brought a bunch of people with <laughs> i don't even know how you think you would be able to stack that with itself i'm sure somebody could answer that uh but besides i jar jargon jar we have some resist damage for three sc physical attack damage taken minus five percent that's it's actually pretty nice for 3 SC if you're going into a fight with some kind of giant barbarian troll that you know it's all just going to be a shit ton of physical damage and you happen to have a couple SC left over, boom, you can numb that damage by a whopping 5%. So in the grand scheme of things, that's actually not bad for 3 SC. Um, we have special breakthrough that's really only going to affect heroes that jive off of special damage. So Leneth. And we have some light attack rise and auto haste. Yeah, we needed that auto haste in there for 14 SC. If anybody's still using auto haste, please get some help. <laughs> it's just 14 SC, bro. Oh, uh, blind resist. Reduces chance of being blinded. Remove blind weakness. It's going to be somewhat useful for some heroes. Do you absolutely need these things? Do you need Ihenjar? Ihenjar? No, you probably don't. Uh, the Arc Ether Reward is a pretty nifty sword, though. 260 strength when taking dark attacks. Damage plus 30% for the next skill used. In some fights, this is going to be pretty effing gnarly. Um, taking this to any fight where there's actual dark damage being uh, dished out against you. Like, if you're fighting a DeGrogue, maybe... This would be really, really good to use against a DeGrogue. She's constantly going to be hitting you with dark attacks. You're constantly going to be getting plus 30% to your next skill used. Uh, this thing does have a 260 strength and it's light attribute. So, uh, not a bad light sword, especially if you're trying to conquer the darkness. That's what I'm going to say about that. So, all in all, I think uh, this arc is strongest with its arc trait. I think that's what most people would want this arc for. If they were going for it, the arc ether is okay, but we have other holy swords. We have tons of holy swords. I mean, I'm not going to complain about getting this one because I do think it's pretty cool. Uh, and the unit skills, you know, I, I just don't think anybody's going to be dying to get their hands on some of these skills. All in all, though, pretty cool arc, right? You can see how it's made specifically for Leneth. And she is a pretty cool lady. I think that's where I stand on this. Uh, now, if I missed anything or if I'm not seeing something, please leave me a comment. Let me know. Share with the class. Educate all of us. I would love to know. Um, may I could be totally wrong about her, but uh, she looks narnar -nar enough to be here, damn it, to be the headliner for this whole thing. And uh, greatness awaits, folks. Uh, be patient, grind as many resources out as you can, 
Uh, you know, I will give them some props for putting the pity all together. I'm like, Fuck, that's, the, that's the least you guys could have done. I honestly think for a lot of people, hell, we might get to run a, and you might just be like, bam, oh, that's the one I'll pity because I've already done 250 pulls uh, on these other four banners. And hopefully you got some of those heroes along the way and then you can just pity the hero that you want. So uh, I guess that's a, I don't even want to call it a step in the right direction. Probably more of a stumble. <laughs> but a stumble in the right direction. Damn it, we are talking about a gotcha game here. So, best of luck to everybody. The onslaught begins. Um, you know, clutch that Visa card tight. And um, you know, we're going to get through this, folks. We are going to get through this. Hold out for part two, part three, whichever part it's going to be. Ooh. That was good. That even rhymed. And I will see you on the flip side later, everybody, and good luck.